Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 15th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see our strong frontal system off the coastline of the Pacific Northwest. You got BC, Washington, Oregon here. We've got a weak warm front moving over the area today, bringing some light rain, but the definite stronger frontal system is the cold front off the coastline here with some cold air back across Pacific. We'll be moving over the Pacific Northwest as we go through the day tomorrow, introducing a thunderstorm threat for some of the region. We'll look at those details here coming up in a moment. That's the main reason here for the second video of the day the strong frontal system pretty active weather day tomorrow some blustery gusty winds with the storm also if we look back across the pacific ocean we've got another mid-latitude cyclone this is associated with the remnants of uh, typhoon bull event out there and it's got a narrow atmospheric river with it as well this is likely to point into british columbia here it's not showing much precept for seattle or portland with this setup here but it's something to watch as it looks like we may warm up but the clouds are going to be close up into bc here so it's going to it's going to make a difference here just how much we warm up after the system gets through our region. We'll take a look at those details here in a moment. Something fun to watch is we've got the storm approaching. You can see the barometer falling. Pretty typical of when you have a storm approaching, you get to watch the barometer fall at your house. Kind of interesting stuff here, no matter what kind of weather station you have. If you have a barometer, you can see that effect. You will see the temperature and the same thing with the tempest. It'll show you some of the UV index and the ultrasonic anemometer on it as well with the solar radiation center. And these stations nowadays will tell you the sunrise and sunset. So this there's lots of good information to be had on there. And I have an air quality index sensor set up to my Davis here as well. Now, anyway, looking at thunderstorms possible Monday, you can see generally just north of Portland there, but does include the Seattle Metro. And probably the best chances here is north of Seattle across maybe Snohomish, Skagit, and Whatcom County here as we have some interesting convergence zone bands moving across the area. But there is going to be a couple rounds of showers here that will have lightning potential also. There is also a chance for some uh, flash flood and debris flow over burn scar areas. You know, we have had a few fires here across the Cascades the last few years. So if we get some of that heavier rain, it could cause some impacts. Also places inland here across Montana, that they've expanded their high wind watch here for Tuesday does now include Great Falls, for example, out there. So yeah, heads up for that. Uh, across the Rocky Mountains, Idaho Panhandle, Southwest Montana, some of Wyoming, British Columbia, the storm is going to make itself felt here as it moves across the area and this is a Spokane National Weather Service. You got rainy and breezy, and you've got some chance of thunderstorms here, even for eastern Washington as well. And then we're going to be unseasonably mild as we go through this week, coming up towards the end of the week before additional systems come knocking on our door towards the end of next weekend. And this is that wildfire burn scar area. It's a, uh, a flood risk, you know, before the fire, after, and then you've got to get this ash and burnt topsoil on the top, and it kind of lets water run right off of that. And some of that ash can actually uh, form some debris flow and whatnot here as well so yeah heads up for that it can shed that water quickly and it also can have debris flow associated with it so watch out if you're around burn scar areas across some of the mountain areas now this is looking at composite reflectivity this is the nam 3km this was as of 18z which is about 11 a.m when this model was running you can see that weep warmth that went over the region today and bringing some light rain and then you can see this frontal system roll through as we go to tomorrow morning it's a fairly progressive front here so it's going to bring some moderate rain with it but it's not going to hang out too long but then you can see the shower activity really pick up in the wake of it it's a colder air loft starts to move in to mainly western washington north of portland but still some interesting cells out there could have lightning potential with them and look at this convergence zone up into southwest bc across bellingham down towards the san juans maybe even clipping Whidbey island some stronger storms moving across maybe tacoma off into the foothills here so heads up for some of these storms we go through tomorrow afternoon and you can see that activity start to push off but you'll notice it leaves this trailing convergence zone across summit uh skagit it's Snohomish County there, and that could trail off into the Cascades overnight on in through Monday night into early Tuesday morning before this next atmospheric river starts to get in here towards BC. And it looks like it's going to be pointing kind of at Vancouver Island here and clipping Washington maybe a little bit coming up here. We'll look actually look at some of the global models here in a moment, get a clearer picture on that. But this is like at the NAM 3 km 850 millibar winds. This is 5,000 feet. If I put this into motion, you can clearly see as we go through tonight and into tomorrow morning, this is that frontal system pushing its way through western washington oregon bc here then we get that wind shift and look at some of these winds here converging showing some strong areas of convergence there and pretty cold air aloft we're going to destabilize things and that's what's going to bring that thunderstorm threat you can kind of see that push down across the area and this convergence on may sag even a little bit further south across the Snohomish county especially off into the foothills and the cascades mountain Cascade Mountains as we go through Monday night into Tuesday, very early Tuesday morning. Here's total precipitation in inches on the NAM 3KM. 
this is representing the warm front today this initial shot of precipitation there now you can see the cold front approaching as we go through tomorrow morning look at some of the olympics in the vancouver island area southwest bc higher terrain some of the coastal range of oregon all the way down towards northern california going to be picking up some pretty good amounts here you could get one and a half plus inches in some localized areas in some places in the olympics could even get three to four inches of rain pretty isolated but it could cause some minor flooding issues and then if we scroll through the afternoon check out some of these showers moving through here you can see some of these bring in streaks of heavier rain with them across some of the Puget Sound area and especially up towards the northwest interior maybe including the San Juans, Bellingham and whatnot the foothills the Cascades as well going to be kind of targeted with some of these heavier showers you can see some bigger amounts showing up across some of the higher terrain here even in excess of two inches is possible now looking at the HER this is the high resolution model the 3km uh, and you can see that warm front associated with that rain today. Here goes our next frontal system tomorrow. And again, it is fairly progressive. So by the time it gets towards early afternoon, that will push through. We get a tiny bit of a break there. And then some of these stronger showers come rolling through. I mean, look at these, some across Whidbey Island, the sand ones up towards Bellingham and Southwest BC and approaching the coastline again through the afternoon hours. Another round of storms moving through here. It could be some lightning potential associated with those as this pushes across the area. And then once we get on into Wednesday, Though. we're going to start to warm up a little bit here and i'll show you that in a few minutes this is looking at that thunderstorm potential here just north of portland and you can kind of see seattle right there doesn't really include spokane but you can't rule out a lightning strike there maybe down towards spokane as well including northeast washington and of course this would include british columbia tomorrow also now this is the uw model this is looking a little bit a wider view of things here and you can see tomorrow this is convective available potential energy so it's the instability in the atmosphere so that frontal system will roll in tomorrow morning then you can see this colder air aloft move over the region and you can see some pretty good areas of cape across from the southwest bc northwest interior all the way down towards portland here on the uw model so yeah that's what's going to bring that thunderstorm activity potentially tomorrow now looking at the 1.33 kilometer this is super high resolution here the, the highest resolution model we have really to cover things around the Pacific Northwest here. This is that warm front moving up over the area today. So we're pretty much done with that and wrapping it up across a lot of the Seattle Metro. And as it moves off into Southwest BC, not the big precipitation maker. But if you look down here, you can see the next frontal system here. Here comes the cold front knocking on our door here. As we go on and through early tomorrow morning, you're gonna notice that rain pick up moves through get a just an hour or two of a break here and then we bring that really cold air aloft and look at some of these showers just to the south at tacoma there maybe across the seattle metro up across the san juans olympic mountains and look at that convergence zone band moving across them at north would be island san juans up towards bellingham here as well and pretty interesting looking signature there going across some of whatcom county there also so heads up for this tomorrow eyes on the sky some small hail gusty winds are possible with this also and this is something notable too you can see on the uw model this convergence zone really sags almost as far south as everett here but brings some pretty heavier rain across some some, some of snohomish county up through the foothills and the cascades as we go on in through a late tomorrow night into early tuesday morning and that's still going like a tuesday morning almost sagging down towards king county and some of snohomish uh, not snohomish snoqualmie pass there as we go on in through tuesday morning I'm taking a look at what is what's causing this here. This is 700 millibars, where it's giving you a nice visual representation of what's going on above us here in the atmosphere. And there's that very cold air aloft out over the Pacific Ocean here. And the warm front uh, moves up over the area here. And then you can see that colder air uh, move over us tomorrow afternoon. That's bringing that thunderstorm chance there. So kind of a nice visual diagram of what's going on at 10,000 feet here. And then we bring the next atmospheric river into the area, probably mainly targeting a Vancouver Island. I also want to show you at 5,000 feet, this is temperature anomaly. So you can see as we go through tonight on into tomorrow morning, you see that colder air start to arrive there. There it is. And that's kind of a brief shot, though. And once that gets out of here, we are going to start warming up. Another atmospheric river again, like I've been mentioning. But you can see things getting pretty toasty here aloft as we go through the mid and later portion of next week. We might have a couple nice days coming up here for some of the area. You have to watch this over the next couple of days as well. Because that atmospheric river and that cloud shield is going to be pretty close just off to the north of Washington here as well. And that's so BC is going to get some clouds out of that system. <clears throat> but now looking at some of the global model stuff here, here's the European 18Z six hour precipitation 
Warm front moves over the region. Here goes our next cold front here across the area. Bring some moderate rain with it. And of course, the associated showers with that cold air aloft after that. But then you can see this narrow atmospheric river targeting western BC, bringing some impressive amounts to Vancouver Island. But you can see it's not bringing much for Seattle or Portland, just kind of just skimming there. And that kind of goes on for a while. This is all the way through Wednesday night. And that's about where the European, uh, the 18Z is about to stop running. Let me just update that because I think it's running as we speak. There it goes. And you can continue to see that moisture just being streamed into British Columbia and really kind of missing in Seattle and Portland here, but where will that cloud shield set up? How much will that play? How much havoc will that play in our temperatures? I mean, if you've got clouds around, of course, you're going to knock down the temps a few degrees. Now, this is looking at the GFS, the 18Z run here. This is 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. Here goes Monday's system there. And then you take a look at this and you're like, oh, we got a ridge over here. We're going to have nice weather across the area, but not so fast because as we saw, you're going to have this atmospheric river embedded there also just because there's a ridge around there's also this tight gradient this trough out here this is going to be spreading some of that moisture back up over the pacific northwest how far south will that sag here right now it looks like it's going to stay north of washington now let's take a look at a couple of the uh, temperatures here coming up so this is six hour two meter max temperature this would be for today and as we go through the day tomorrow, of course, we're going to have the frontal system and pretty chilly air aloft. Then we go into Tuesday, and you can see things cool down a bit here for western Washington especially. But by the time we get to Wednesday, look at that, maybe 70 for Seattle. Looking at some 70s for the Willamette Valley here as well. But you're going to have that atmospheric river moving across from Vancouver Island. So it's going to be a kind of a different world between like western Oregon and Vancouver Island on the day Wednesday. Go on in through Thursday, and you can still see pretty warm. Even southwest BC starting to get in the act here. But look at some of the Willamette Valley all the up to the mid and upper uh, 70s here as we go on into the day thursday friday another fairly nice day here as well like some of the willamette valley into the mid 70s here then we go into saturday notice things start to cool down again and we start to get some chillier systems potentially coming down as we go through next week and also look at that by the time we get towards next monday things really cooling down across some of british columbia and some of the higher terrain of washington I mean, we'll be talking about a little bit of snowfall for the higher terrain if we time this thing or uh, if we place this trough over us, I should say, uh, in a pretty uh, nice trajectory, we could get some upper elevation snowfall. No promises just yet. Kind of just uh, dreaming about fantasy land and some snow in the higher terrain there. This is looking at daily two meter max temperature. This would be for tomorrow. And we're going to have the system over the top of us here, probably some lower 60s for the Seattle area. And then we go to Tuesday. Look at Wednesday. I mean, you're going to be getting some 70s across western Washington, western Oregon. Thursday, another very nice warm day here across much of the region. And then Friday, but look at Saturday, Sunday. Check it out pattern change again here coming as we go through next week and things getting a little bit chilly looking here as we go on to monday october 23rd and even look at tuesday even a little bit chillier look at some of the high temperatures here across some of the higher terrain of the cascades only into the 30s so something to watch here as we move on towards next week this is looking at Tillamook here coming up. You can see our frontal system. Then we get that couple day break showing up and then maybe the return to some active weather here as we go on into next week. Something similar there for Hoquiam. And here's an eight to 14 day. So this would be after that nice weather. You can kind of see the little bit of a trend here to some below normal conditions as we go through the end of October. And this is the eight to 14 day precipitation outlook as we go through October 29th as well. A lot of the West, in fact, a lot of the lower 48, except for the East Coast, kind of an above average signal there. But anyway, yeah, interesting frontal system rolling through here. Eyes in the sky tomorrow. You guys know the drill. Watch out for those convergent zones. And probably the afternoon is definitely going to be the best chance. I mean, it probably definitely. It, it is. That's the best chance. It's going to be in the afternoon. You're going to have the convergent zone activity moving across some of the north sound, potentially sagging down across some of the central cascades as we go on through very early uh, Tuesday morning here. So, yeah, interesting stuff here. So I'd do another video out there. And yeah, then we have this next system to worry about here. So we'll watch this one closely and we'll see if it's going to throw a monkey wrench here in some of the high temperatures as we go through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday coming up as well. It could. I mean, if that sags a little bit further south, you could end up with some rain falling across some of Western Washington, for example, when you're expecting a 65, 70 degree day. So something to watch here for the next few days. We'll break those details down as we go through tomorrow's video. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a good Sunday out there. Uh, click like and subscribe and we will do this again in the regular briefing tomorrow.